transfer window to discuss all things West Midlands football uh, from uh, not just the previous weekend, but also how our teams have got on in January. One or two more people may be joining us uh, throughout the hour, but for right now, we'll press on with me, Ben Ellis. A very good evening uh, to you watching on uh, Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. Also to Jack Spedding and to uh, Jonathan Wimrush is here as well. Guys, good evening. Hello. Hey. How are you? I'm good. So I'm a good bit panicky there. That that split second, but um, <laughs> you're not the only one. Yeah, exactly. Just, uh, yeah, me, me and Jack. Oh, has gone again. There we go. <laughs> me, me and Jack were like, "No, I'm here. Uh, I'm here. What's Seriously, going I'm, what's going on?" <laughs> yeah, some proper gremlins in gremlins in the system uh, <laughs> this evening. Um, so yeah, intermittently we may drop out, but uh, you know, I did all my pre-flight checks and everything was fine and just at the moment we were about to go bang we fell out but um we'll, we'll stop all the amateurish stuff now and um because not just in in terms of the transfer window uh but the uh, obvious speculation of the future of valerian ismail now it doesn't happen very often uh it probably doesn't happen as often as you think but on saturday at millwall you know, even from an outsider's point of view, uh, of which myself and and Jack as Villa fans, uh, you felt it turn nasty. You felt it turn ugly, uh, and and it's just a uh, is it is it just a, a culmination of what you guys have had to put up with watching all season. It it, it finally came to a head at Millwall. Yeah, absolutely. It was um, it basically it all bottled up throughout the entire season. Um, we have basically come off the worst week of the um, season so far, losing 2-0 to both Preston and Millwall. Uh, two teams we really should be beating in this league, to be honest. Um, but, yeah, I think um, a lot of the frustration from the fans has spilled over into the scenes we saw on Saturday, unfortunately, with the flares and the seats getting ripped up. Um, but, yeah, it's... It's all down to the uh, to the to the football we're having to um, endure at the moment. Uh, I mean, Valeria and Ismail. Um, there's literally no plan B. We go a goal down, and he sticks to like what literally has not been working um, the entire game. So it's a uh, it's a tough one. I mean, substitutes that he's making are not affecting the game. Um, they're like for like subs. His formation um, is. To, for want of a better word, wrong. And um, like he's literally not playing people in their natural positions. You may blame that to um, recruitment and the depth of the squad. But, I mean, we, we've we been relegated from the Premier League, you know, uh, at the start of the season. And we were the book, one of the bookies' favourites to come straight back up, along with Fulham and possibly Bournemouth as well. And we just haven't lived up to the expectations. And it has really frustrated the West Bromwich Albion fans as a result. Can't hear this, Ben. Sorry. Audio, Ben. Oh, I'm having a great night. Anyway. Um, Sorry, um, I was just think from the outside, Jack, looking in uh, from a, a, a fan's point of view, we heard about flares being thrown on the pitch and seats being ripped off. It was away at Millwall, so was it not just a case of when in Rome? Well, yes, there is that, I guess. Yeah, I, to be honest, <laughs> there, yeah, I didn't think about that. Yeah, but I guess that is, a, yeah, that has happened in the past, hasn't it? I thought it's unusual, West Brom. They have this reputation, don't they, West Bromwich Albion, of sacking managers when it's not going right you know they don't usually hang around with this sort of thing but this time they seem to be and i thought he would have been gone after they lost 2-0 at home to preston i think it was last week um, and the millwall result compounded that as well they don't look like you know as jonathan said they was they were one of the favorites to go up and the squad isn't bad i don't think unless jonathan could tell me otherwise um but i don't think ismail is having any effect there whatsoever um it just seems to have really turned quite ugly quite nasty usually when away fans start you know because they're the ones that go to the games thick and thin and they're the big loyal fans who 
you know, you want to listen to really. And when they start turning nasty and they start turning against the manager, which, you know, I don't know, it might have just been a few drunken idiots in Mill once it on, or it might have just been a culmination of this is terrible. We want something different. It, it would be one thing if it was, you know, West Brom were playing lovely free flowing football and you could see where the plan was. But I've seen them a couple of times this season. It's just not inspiring. You just don't think, you know, and there is a way of getting out of a championship. And sometimes that is the way. And sometimes it is practical. But as Jonathan says, there's no pragmatism there. There's no plan B. And I think something does need to change pretty sharpish. I mean, uh, we, we've talked on, on here before about what, what we've seen with, with West Bromwich Albion this season. Uh, Jonathan, you say he hasn't got a plan B. I, I, I'm struggling with what plan A is, to be yeah. quite honest. So um, we, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> the, the problem that they've got, they've got, they've got two problems, uh, essentially, and they've given him a four-year contract. Mm. Now, you would assume... Given this little break period that they've got now, the reports are um, that Valerian Ismail is in Germany at the moment because he's gone back to um, see his family who are still based there. Now, it's only speculation. There's nothing to base this on whatsoever. I don't think I've seen anybody have any kind of inside information, but it's likely, some are saying, that, that some kind of deal is being thrashed out between himself and the board as some kind of severance, and that by the time... Uh, the, the, by the time West Brom play their next game, uh, that Valerian Ismail will not be in, uh, will not be in the dugout. If that happens, Jonathan, it's going to have to be that way, isn't it? They, 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 they can't just sack somebody on a big four year contract. No, absolutely. Um, this four year contract that he's um signed up to, it's supposed to be a big four year project, but I've been speaking to some, uh, West Bromwich Albion uh, YouTube vloggers and they've said that if this keeps up in four years time we'll be down in League 2 fighting derbies with Warsaw so um, it's uh, it, it's it's really a toxic atmosphere at the Hawthorns at the moment with the uh, whole you know they're not going to sack him because they've got him for four years if they sack him they've got to like pay him money that the club owes him uh, money which the owner well if he our transfer window has literally been a couple of strikers and one of those is already injured. So, um, yeah, and, and the other one's Andy Carroll. But, you know, with owners like that that won't invest in transfers, then what hope have we got for them to actually pay compensation to Valerian Ishmael uh, for the uh, remainder of his contract? Um, and, yeah, basically, it as I said, it's a really toxic atmosphere. Uh, the... Fans want um, Valerian Ishmael out. Uh, the players, certain players are not happy with the way he's been playing. Um, Sam Johnston as well. We don't know what's going on with him at the moment. Um, nothing happened in the transfer window. So he's obviously staying at the Albion. But th there's, there's an internal issue uh, which he's been thrown around all week, uh, last week. Um, that's why he didn't play in the Preston or Millwall games. Um, but yeah, it's it's really uh, it's really frustrating for the Baggies fans at the moment because we're literally hearing nothing whatsoever um, apart from like Valerian Ishmael visiting his family in Germany. Um, but some of us are saying, well, we were supposed to play Bournemouth this weekend, but Bournemouth are busy in the FA Cup, so we've got a week off. So he's using the time to go visit his family. So we're not holding out too much hope that he is actually going to be sacked this week to be honest Bournemouth are also very busy on transfer deadline day they're doing the kind of deals um that if you you harbor realistic ambitions and, and uh, realistically only second place is available now because Fulham look like they're going over the over the horizon back to the Premier League uh, yeah. that the, there's only really second place in terms of automatic places we'll come on to that uh, in just a moment w one piece of circumstantial evidence to the country that Valerian Ismail um, is being sacked in that he probably isn't going anywhere because, quite surprisingly, Robert Snodgrass has left the club by um, by mutual he's consent had his, yeah. had his contract uh, terminated. Um, he's one of the 
the names that had reportedly fallen out with Valerian Ismail, we mentioned the, the Sam Johnston um, issue. The player leaves might indicate the manager stays. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I touched on this uh, last night in the uh, Deadline Day podcast. Um, basically, you know, Snodgrass has been a big advocate against Valerian's tactics, Valerian's uh, management style, and now his contract has been terminated by mutual consent, meaning, you know, the club have essentially taken Valerian's side in that um, respect. So, yeah, that's uh, that's really how us fans feel um, that has gone. It has gone with the way of Valerian Ishmael, meaning, you know, like I said, we're not holding out much hope of him actually getting sacked anytime soon. And Jack, I mean, just on, on the point of that, again, we're on the outside looking in, but we know about having Robert Snodgrass in your team if you're looking to push for for promotion. That, that That's a player you want to be hanging on to if, you, if you've got realistic ambitions of going up. It is. He is 35 now, I guess. That is one thing you could say about him. I did. I was amazed when, um, a couple of things I was amazed by, when Jonathan said one of our two new strikers is injured and it wasn't Andy Carroll. That really surprised me. And uh, the other one was um, when I saw this morning that that statement that West Brom tweeted of the club has parted ways with, and I just assumed it would be Valerian Ismail, and it wasn't. Yeah. It was Robert Snodgrass. Um, so, you know, it hasn't been great there. I, I do think, in terms of the money side of things, I don't know how... I was going to ask Jonathan about Sam Johnston as well, actually, because I know he hadn't played in the past couple of games, which, again, we know all about how he helps teams nearly get promoted as well. Um, um, but, yeah, it, it's. I was looking at the table there, and it is it is salvageable. They're fifth, West Brom. Bournemouth are slipping. Um, Blackburn, you know, they you know eventually they're due a dip. It, you know, it, this is yeah. very much not season over at all. Um, so you'd think that if they do get eventually get the right man in, um, which I do think will be sooner rather than later. I know we've got these little things of oh maybe he won't maybe he will i mean you know everton took sides with uh rafa benitez over luca dean and then rafa went a week later so that's the yeah. kind of precedent you could have with that really you know football is a fickle thing um i looked at some of the comments on that snodgrass release today on that twitter on that tweet and it wasn't particularly positive from west brom fans i don't think many were particularly sorry to see him go like i say he's 35 now so um good luck to him but I think West Brom have got bigger problems at the minute, and I don't think yeah. he was, you know, I don't think he was top of the list. At the, at the moment, um, the problem with West Brom and Jalbion is, you know, comparing ourselves to Bournemouth, who have identified that they're dropping points, have identified that they're slipping down the table, and have essentially made moves towards that by signing no less than five players yesterday. Um, Albion, no such thing. We haven't identified the problems. Um, the board seems to think everything is fine. And, you know, when your own fans are going to away games and ripping up seats and, fl and throwing flares, then obviously not everything is fine. Um, so I think that's comparing us with Bournemouth. Bournemouth have identified their problems. And unfortunately, um, Albion, we haven't. Look at the squad, uh, and you, you can reel off a list of names. Uh, you know, sort of Sam Johnston, Matt Phillips, and uh, Livermore, and you know, you, it's an endless list. They were at West Brom two relegations ago yeah. from the Premier League. <laughs> um, you know, you go down, come up again, come down, come up again, and yeah, yeah. it looks like it's it, Carl, Carl it's Bartley kind of, as well. You know. Carl Bartley, it, it, yeah, another good example there. So they've not really shown any desire uh, from uh, from a boardroom perspective of, of freshening it up, not to the extent where um, I mean, a lot of these players, Darren Moore had them in in his his brief spell in charge. And and they only just um only just missed out on getting to the plough final by one kick of the ball. I can't remember who that was against, but we'll move on. Um I uh, wonder. I wonder who that was. Uh, <laughs> uh just look at the Premier League table, mate. You'll be you'll find yeah. you'll be able to figure out who it is. Um yeah. right. 
but they but do you know what I'm saying that you know they haven't re- I, I don't see any youngsters coming through I don't um there aren't any um you know there's kind of Gallagher and he had him on loan a bit you know and he's gone on and done sort of good things in, in the Premier League but you know the makeup of the squad it, it's it's just stale yeah um I mean uh, our under 23s are beating the likes of Arsenal's under 23s at the moment. And, you know, us as fans are looking to the under 23 squad and we're like, why isn't the first team A, playing like that, or B, including them in the first team matches? Um, the only time we actually had any true academy players is when, you know, we were hit with multiple COVID cases. Uh, against Reading, the EFL said, no, you're playing. Um, So we ended up with um, David Button on the bench, plus all the academy players. And even then, we only made one substitution all game. Um, And that was, um, who was it now? It was uh, Rhys Cleary, um, who has been on phenomenal form for the under-23s. So we're having a good academy. And the problem is, we're just not utilising the academy. Uh, yesterday, uh, one or two um, academy players went out on loan when we really could be doing with them uh, at the club, uh, to be honest, you know, helping us get a promotion instead of like no disrespect to them, helping the likes of Cheltenham. And um, who was the other one? Uh, well, I forgot the other one, but I know um, one of our guys went to Cheltenham on loan. So no disrespect to Cheltenham, but we could have done with that guy, um, that kid. Uh, at the uh, at the club right now, to be honest, I think there's there's something that's very telling that happened uh, at the weekend that gives uh, an insight into the situation uh, at West Bromwich Albion. In that, uh, Jordan Hugel scored for Cardiff, who are having a wretched season. Yeah, we absolutely uh, in, in, in in yeah, I'm, I'm sure in, in a two one victory against Not- Nottingham Forest, and so. Yeah, he he was one of the players that that has come in for a lot of criticism from 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 the West Brom fans. I didn't watch the Cardiff game. I don't know how how that, how that matched up or anything like that. I don't know what kind of goal it was or the way Cardiff played or anything sort of anything like that at all. Um, but Jordan Hugo was one of the few that, um, and there, there was more than one um, that that players that fans were targeting uh, as as kind of not being good enough to play for. Uh, West Bromwich Albion, but he goes and scores in a in a a two one win for Cardiff, which I found yeah. uh, I found interesting. There's a lot as well, um, Jonathan. There's a, players in all the positions in in midfield and and what have you. They're all kind of much of a muchness. There isn't anybody that kind of stands out or um, could do something that a little bit different. Or you know, you, you, a bit further forward, if you get Dean Garner on a good day, I mean that's that, that's another story as. Yeah. Uh, as well, and, and the, yes, they've been unfortunate with DK with 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 his with his injury. They're kind of, you know, seven million quid for West Brom in the championships, a lot of money, and you, you know, to, for that to have, have worked out the way it has is is kind of unfortunate. And and you never know with Andy Carroll uh, what 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 you're gonna you're gonna get there. But but they've, they've got to start getting the balls into the box if they're going to use Andy Carroll. Um, but a, a lot of the a lot of it is is all sort of much of a muchness. I, I don't see any, I don't see any variety amongst the uh, amongst the players, particularly in midfield. No, oh, absolutely. I mean, um, some of the stats uh, in recent games, we uh, basically you can compare them to a game of FIFA 22. Um, basically, you know, we've had like 29 shots, and only two of them have been on target with no goal with no goals. And Preston have three shots on target and score with two of them. Um, so it's like it's not like we're not creating chances, but we're just not putting them away when we really need to. We, like I said, Preston is a team we really should be beating. Millwall is a team we really should be beating. But you know we've just not got that killer edge in the uh, in the opposition box um, or that one moment of magic to turn a game around. Uh, it's just not there. And I look at the squad and I see the midfield with uh, Livermore, Malumbe, um, Taylor Gardner-Hickman is coming up through the ranks anyway. He's like the exception to the uh, academy rule, to be honest. Uh, he has been included in the first team for quite a few games. Um, and yeah, it, and Alex Moat as well. And 
I just don't see any cutting edge at the moment. Uh, like you said, Dean Garner on a good day, he's phenomenal. Um, Callum Robinson, um, he's been guilty of missing a few sitters, but he has scored some great goals um, recently, um, like against Peterborough, uh, when we actually did turn that one around. But yeah, it's uh, I, I just don't see any cutting edge from Albion at the moment. Maybe Andy Carroll, you know, because we're good at crossing the ball and the long throws from Darnell Furlong and Connor Townsend. Um, we can get the balls in the box to Andy Carroll. He's a big striker. And yeah, providing he doesn't get injured, fingers crossed, um, maybe he can be the one to start banging the goals in, to be honest. I've had a message from uh, Debbie or Deb on uh, Facebook. If Val is sacked, does Mazza go as well? I'm assuming she means James Morrison. James Morrison, yeah. Uh, with, with that, I mean, he's been one that's been kind of linked as taking over along with Chris Brunt for the remainder of the season, should that happen. Do you see that working? Well, to be honest, it's the same situation that Everton had when Rafa Benitez was sacked because they had um, Duncan Ferguson um, in temporary charge of them before uh, we now know Frank Lampard is managing Everton. Uh, basically, Duncan Ferguson at Everton, club legend. Um, and, of course, James Morrison, Chris Brunt. We've had, you know, phenomenal games uh, with those over the years. And yeah, absolutely. Club legends uh, like Chris Brunt, James Morrison know the club well, know how the fans, are, what the fans are like, um, because they've literally been there through Premier League years, um, our best Premier League years. And yeah, I, I say uh, give it to Morrison and Brunt uh, for the moment, but it's really going to be the same situation as what Duncan Ferguson had recently with Everton. Just uh, broadening this out now, uh, Jack, because I heard a lot of uh, West Brom fans say at the weekend, it, it's, I'm not going to do an, an Albion fan accent but because that would be insulting, but um, it, it's the worst football I've ever seen under Valerian Ismail. It, it's it's absolutely terrible. I, a lot of people have kind of very kind of short memories when it comes to this kind of thing. But from a, a, a fan's point of view, a Villa, if you want to take it from a Villa fan's point of view, what's the worst football you've ever seen supporting oh. your team? Now then, now we are talking. I'd say, just quickly on that West Brom thing, it might have been a surprise to people that Dolores Isabel plays like this. Because if you saw Barnsley play at all last season, they were incredibly direct and they were incredibly, you know, difficult to beat. And, you know, that might work if you've got an underdog mentality. But when you are one of the top three teams in the league, really, in terms of club size and on paper, you should be... You shouldn't have that, you know, mentality of let's just kick it long to the big lad up front. Um, and then he did that thing of swapping three strikers up front last season, didn't he? At half time every game, which seemed to work. But obviously, you can't do that as much anymore. Worst football I've seen. Um, Capello's England wasn't great at the World Cup. That wasn't good. Um, but in terms of Villa, I mean, it would have to be that season when we ended up with Eric Black in charge and everyone just sort of gave up. And then, you know, we lost like. 14 out of 15 games or whatever it was. Um, my Lambert years weren't great. They were quite dull. Um, and obviously, you just let's pretend that Alex McLeese never existed, I guess. Yeah, that one, okay. we, we don't, we don't, we don't include that one. That was <laughs> a, 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 that's, that's just no, erase from memory. Yes, uh, like, I think that would be the, mm. yeah. Thanks to Deb for getting back in touch. Uh, give it to Brunty and Mazza. They will kill it. And uh, her nine-year-old grandson plays better than uh, the donkeys they have at West Bromwich Albion, is what she says. Um, but that's a, that's an interesting point, though, isn't it, uh, Jonathan? We'll, we'll, we'll finish on uh, West Brom with this now. Talk about the manager all you want, but if, if the players are not doing the business, I mean, I, I heard accusations that, that they were bottling it on, on Saturday. Yeah. I mean... Um... I heard those as well. Um, it was like this this and the uh, Preston game were literally the worst performances that we've ever seen from a West Brom Javion squad. It's almost like they um, quote unquote down tools uh, because, you know, I don't know what's happening on the training ground, um, but maybe there's something that um, they don't agree with, with Valerian's management style, with his tactics. Uh, it might actually go deeper than the whole Snodgrass and Johnston situations. Um, 
But yeah, there's a lot of big influencers within the West Bromwich Albion team. You've got experienced people like Livermore and Bartley um, that are huge influencers on the younger younger players um, like Furlong and Moat and uh, everyone like that. But yeah, it's uh, I mean, I was at the Preston game uh, last week and literally when they scored the second goal, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you know about 75 percent of the Hawthorns just emptied you know we had enough we had absolutely had enough i mean i only stayed there to finish my match vlog otherwise i'd have been out at the stadium as well um but yeah it, it's like literally the worst football that we'd ever seen um and yes yeah, some of that does have to fall not just on valerian ishmael but the players as well they've, they've got to do better i mean we've got this squad now until the end of the season you know transfers are done now and we've just got to, you know, if we've got any hope of salvaging this season, they've got to play better, to be honest. And I think that's quite interesting uh, as well to hear West Brom fans say it's the worst football they've ever seen and the Tony Pulis era is still fresh in the memory uh, as well. I think what, what we're actually saying, I think, Jack, you made a good point. Uh, you made a good point about... Um, Valerian Ismail with Barnsley and the, and the underdog mentality. Uh, Pulis had that in the Premier League fighting to stay in it and yeah. did it for as long as he could. Maybe if Pulis was in charge of this team now in the Championship, you probably would still be seeing the same uh, the same kind of outcome because because of expectations. But I think that's a, that's a, a, a good place to leave that f uh, for now. And thanks to Deb for all her, of her comments as well. You can comment too. Uh, Facebook, there's Twitter as well. And we're streaming on YouTube, the West Midlands Football Podcast. We're normally here on a Sunday, uh, but we've left it till Tuesday now that the transfer window has indeed closed. And we're staying in the...